Good morning. <clears throat> the year 2016 was pretty much known as the year of celebrity deaths. One of the years in history, and certainly in, in recordable history, when so many well-known people, celebrities died. So people from musicians like David Bowie and Prince and George Michael to comedians like Victoria Wood, um, actors like Alan Rickman and radio presenters like Terry Wogan, to name just a few. <clears throat> and the BBC recorded in that year, they had 49 pre-recorded obituaries. So they pre-recorded obitu obituaries for loads of famous people, but there were loads more people who died, famous people, that obituaries weren't recorded for. So 2016 was the year of celebrity deaths. For most of us, 2020 and 2021 are actually the years when most of us have been touched by the deaths of people we know, people we love, friends, neighbours, people we see, used to see in every day. And I don't, that's no different for me, it's no different for many people. And I certainly have been to more funerals this year than I wanted to go to. This week, I went to a funeral of a lovely friend. And... At her funeral, her name was Shirley, um, I sat between two friends, so I was sandwiched between one friend on one side who most of us agree, who know her, she's a bit of a nutter, adorable, lovely, but a nutter. And on the other side, a very different friend who I love just as much, who is very, very quiet and elegant and staid lady. She's really quite lovely. And everyone who spoke at our friend Shirley's funeral, including Sally, who took the funeral, really had to work hard to not just stand there and cry. Because she was just a lovely, ordinary, normal, humble lady. She didn't die of COVID. She died of heart failure. <clears throat> because she'd had a pacemaker for some years. So, But her funeral in many ways was very different. Because it brought to mind many of the things that other people have said about losing people they love. And when I spoke to my more quiet and personal friend at the end of the, the funeral, she was quite overwhelmed by the depth of love and passion and, and grief and sadness and laughter and fun about our mutual friend. Now, she too had known Shirley for a few years, not quite as long, certainly not as long as Sally, not as long as myself. But she was a more reserved and quiet person. So she didn't know quite the madness of Shirley, the, the fun of Shirley. And she said at her funeral, I wish I'd known her even more. But she was deeply touched by the the, the feeling of pure love in the room as we spoke about her, as we laid her to rest, so to speak. And it really made me think about how Jesus thought about himself and how he warned people that he was going to die. So he told the disciples several times, I won't always be with you. Oh, you will have me here for a while. 
but you won't always have me. <clears throat> but then you said he would come again, so we would always have him. And that's almost a bit of a paradox, isn't it? But he was talking about having him there physically and having him there in spirit. And I don't think the disciples always quite got that. And certainly as a child, when I was being taught it and reading that, it didn't make an awful lot of sense to me. And Jesus is always with us, whether we know it or not, whether we accept it or not. One of the lovely things I remember about Shirley is when I first got to know her, she didn't know Jesus at all. And quietly and steadily through the love of people, especially Sally, and explaining her faith to her, <clears throat> Shirley got to know Jesus. And in the company of people like my quiet friend and my very noisy, nutty friend and others, she learned that this Jesus is for everybody. And she learned to pray to him. And I don't doubt for a minute she's with him. But one of the things that struck me very forcibly at this funeral was how people didn't know some of the things that Shirley knew and how many of the people that, at the funeral didn't know Shirley. And that's often the case, isn't it? When we go to funerals of someone we know, we know them only from our perspective. And we learn so much about them that we think, oh, I wish I'd known that. I wish I'd been able to talk to them about that. And that, that struck me about Shirley because I'm very fortunate. Most of the things that were talked about I knew because I got to spend a lot of time with her. Um, we often ate together, we often chatted, she often gave me lifts home after I wasn't allowed to drive anymore. So I just got to know her quite well from general chatting. And my friend hadn't got to know her quite so well, but really wish she had. And at the drinks we had afterwards, where we all sat down with a cup of tea and some cake and talked about her, we were fortunate enough to be able to share lots of photographs and there were a lot of laughs. There were a lot of stories being told. And it was wonderful celebrating her life from that. And one of the things it made me think of is something that my youngest sister, Fizz, said some years ago. And she put up on her Facebook something which is quite common on Facebook. And it said this. It said, if you love me. Don't wait until my funeral to tell people that. Don't wait until my, fu my funeral to tell me that. Tell me now. And so I have a habit of telling Fizz, my sister, that I love her. And I do. And actually, the good things about people, the things we really value about them, their friendship, their love, their humour, their humility, and my friend Shirley was a very humble woman, but she touched so many lives with her absolute kindness. Tell people, tell people you appreciate that of them. In this year of so many funerals, we have all learned, I think, that we don't tell people enough how much we love them. So those of you who listen to this and know me, know me personally, then know I love you. And I do. It's not a throwaway word. It's a real thing. And the people you love, make sure you tell them. Make sure you show them. Make sure you make a point of letting them know that you know the good things about them. It's not going to make people big-headed. But what it is going to do is reassure them. And the thing Jesus told us more than he told us anything else is how much he loves us. And he told us to go and love one another. 
and let's just practice it. It's not rocket science and it's not hard. With love and prayers, God bless you. Have a fantastic day and a brilliant week. Bye-bye.